What's up guys, welcome to the channel. My name is Charlie and in this video I want to talk about five of my favorite modifications I've made to my C5 Corvette. So I've made a lot of modifications to the car if you've seen the channel at all, but these are the five things that I think are the most essential and if I started over with a brand new car that was completely stock, these would be the things that I would do first by far. Now three of them are interior modifications and two of them are performance mods. So um, you can be the judge of whether or not these would be things that you'd want to do to your car, but for my purpose, these did a great job of transforming this car into something that I really liked, into something that I really enjoy driving. So we're just going to jump right into number one. We're going to start with the performance mods because I'm going to talk a little bit more in depth about the interior mods that I did because there's a few caveats that we have to make if you wanted to do these yourself. So we're going to start with the basic ones, which are the performance ones. And I'm going to get the boring one out of the way first, and that's an exhaust, okay? I really think that the C5 Corvette has plenty of power stock, so it's not really a power thing that you're trying to do with performance. It's something that you just want to make the car sound better. I will admit that the factory mufflers don't sound very good, so that's probably the first thing that you're going to want to replace just as soon as you get the car. They don't sound bad, you just want it to sound better. So that's number one, which is an exhaust. Just buy yourself a nice cat back. Uh, this car actually has long tubes, no cats the full nine yards and it's absolutely absurd. It's really loud, it's too loud, but for if you're just starting back out with a car on a bone stock car, just mufflers is all you need. Number two on the list is actually kind of a two for one. So it's not the wheels, although the wheels uh, I do think look really good. These are Apex EC7s in uh, 18 by 10s and I have some Hankook RS4s, which are fantastic, but that's not what I wanna talk about. What I wanna talk about is behind that are coilovers and sway bars. For the sake of a stock car, the coilovers are a little bit overkill, but I think the number one thing for the suspension is the sway bars. This car had the factory shocks on it, and they were all right. They weren't necessarily blown, but you could tell that they needed to be revamped. So I went ahead and bought coilovers. But what I think made the biggest difference were the sway bars. And I've got another video on the install of the sway bars. So check that out in the link in the description below. If you want to see more of how that looks, uh, which ones I bought and everything. But for this car specifically, adding the sway bars really helped level out a lot of the body roll. So the car, obviously it's 20 years old. So the suspension is a little worn and dated to begin with. And just the driving experience, it was really kind of, it's not too bad, but it's the, the body roll is definitely something that you want to address. I did at least. So sway bars and coilovers, you can get by with just some performance shock absorbers. Also, I'm gonna go ahead and point out why I have this board on here. It's actually so low, I can't get a jack under the car right now. So I have to pull the car up on this little piece of wood I found just to get it high enough to put the jack under. And it's a low profile jack too, so. Um, you know, but you know, low car life, make sure you are okay with being able to accommodate your life with a low car. If you do something like this to the suspension, because the front is quite low as well, uh, you're gonna scrape on a lot of curbs. That's why Gorilla Tape comes in handy on the splitter, but you know, that's just part of it. So that's number two, which is the sway bars and the shock absorber is kind of a two for one. So those are the two performance modifications that I think really transform the car. I think that being able to hear it better and then being able to have the car have less body roll, less sway, really makes a huge difference and it really makes the car a lot more enjoyable to drive. Now, moving to the interior brings me to my third modification and the first one in the interior, which are these seats. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and caveat this by saying that the factory seats are not bad. They're actually quite comfortable, they're relatively supportive, and uh, if you plan to drive this car on long road trips, they definitely are something that you probably would want to keep. Now for me, in my application, and this, were, this is where the asterisk comes in, uh, I bought this car to be an HPDE track day autocross kind of weekend secondary car. So comfort in the seats wasn't a priority. Now if you daily drive your car or if you take long road trips or if you have a lot of random passengers who aren't used to racing seats, this isn't something that you may want to do or you may look at different types of seats. I wanted something that held me in the car more because once you start doing performance modifications to the car, it becomes more and more important that you stay put. Now in doing the seat, this is kind of a two for one, uh, in doing the seat I had to get rid of the stock seat belts. Well, I didn't have to get rid of them, but I couldn't use them anymore because being a fixed seat that has these high side bolsters the seatbelt doesn't actually go over your lap anymore. So 
you're kind of forced to run a harness, which I was gonna do anyways. That was my intention because again, I wanted to track the car, um, but seats were something that I really needed. Uh, for track days, HPDE autocross, the stock seats just don't hold you well enough, not enough that I wanted and that I needed in my driving style, so I really had to fix these. I will say, to me, these are very comfortable seats. I reviewed them recently in another video. Again, if you wanna check that out, it'll be in the description below. Um, I really love these seats. I think for the money, they're a fantastic, super safe FIA rated seat, and I don't think you can beat them for the price. They look great, and surprisingly, they're even more comfortable than they look. But yeah, so that's my third modification, which are seats. Kind of in conjunction with that, going along with the driver experience theme, brings me to number four, which is the steering wheel. So uh, again, like the seats, the stock steering wheel was all right. I will say that it was gigantic and it kind of reminded me of like a dump truck wheel or like a bus. It was humongous. I mean, uh, just for track driving, it just did not tailor itself at all to performance driving. So. When I went with the seats and I knew I was going with the harness, I had to get rid of the steering wheel. This is a Sparco L360. Um, again, I'll put the links to all these things in the description in case you're interested in uh, doing these things yourself. This is a fantastic steering wheel. It's made out of that Alcantara suede microfiber stuff, which really is grippy. Um, you have to clean it every once in a while, but it's really nice and it's really comfortable, uh, especially with gloves on when you're out on track. It gives you a lot of grip and a lot of confidence in being able to control the car. And kind of as an added bonus, it also is on a quick release. So I'm able to quickly take this out, which makes getting in and out of the car in these seats a whole lot easier because you've got a lot more space. And that brings us to our fifth and final modification that I made to the car that I can't live without, which is right here in the center console. And that's my radio head unit. This is a Pioneer 2660 Nex DNH something. I don't know. I'll put a link in the description below. But this is a head unit that is a, uh, I believe it's a capacitive touch screen, which is like your phone. So it's really responsive. It has Bluetooth, Apple CarPlay, all those standard things that you would expect on a modern car, which is why it's so nice to have in something like this. The factory radio sucks. Get rid of it as fast as you can. Um, I, not necessarily that this Pioneer one is the best, but I have really, really, really liked it. I've really enjoyed this. Uh, it's been fantastic. The touch sensitivity is great. Um, it has Apple CarPlay, Bluetooth, all this stuff on it and stuff and stuff. It's basically just a nice radio. It just made the car a whole lot better over stock. Um, it was about $350-ish or so. But in this car, the console is really easy to get out. This whole section just kind of comes out as one piece, the plastic. You do have to kind of cut away and get a, a double din space. I think they even sell the plastic kit here all as one piece that already has the cutout for a double din. So I'll try and find one of those and put those in the link as well. Um, but changing out the radio was really simple. You buy a harness adapter from, I think I bought everything from Crutchfield. It's just literally unbolt the factory radio, put this one in, and then plug it up and it works perfectly. Didn't have to change the speakers or anything. But this has really made the car feel a lot more modern. Being able to have Apple CarPlay, Bluetooth radio and stuff has really helped this old car feel a lot more modern than it is. So that actually wraps up the five of my most essential modifications that I've made to my C5 Corvette. Your five most essential modifications may be completely, totally different. But that's the whole point about doing mods to your car is to make something that's more personal to your driving style. I made the modifications that work best for the things that I get the most out of, and that's what you should do too. Uh, leave me a comment below. Uh, let me know the five things you would do to your car. Um, if you have any questions about anything I talked about, leave that in the comment below as well. I'll try to get back to you. If you liked the video, like it, subscribe to the channel, all that kind of normal stuff, and I'll see you in the next one. See you.